ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying time is here. That's right, we're talking Dream Warriors Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 on Kill by Kill. Well, greetings and salutations, Internet. It's your old pal, Patrick Hamilton, coming to you once again from 1428 Elm Street. This is the Kill by Kill podcast, where we are dedicated to celebrating the least discussed component of any horror film, the characters. That's right, we're going to break it all down in the hopes that a young Dream Warrior's untimely end is just the beginning of the jokes that we can make about them. And as always, there's only one person I trust that if we need to dig a grave for a burned alive serial killer, she'll turn to me and go, we don't need to make it the size of a fucking regular body. It's just a pile of bones, dummy. The one and the only Gina Radcliffe. How are you doing, Gina? I'm good. I've I've got my my uh, combination vampire wizard cape on. I, I'm <laughs> I, I'm ready ready to do battle with the undead. Well, they're coming at you. They're coming at you in Jason and the Argonauts vision. Uh, it makes them deadly, and for some reason, they're allowed to move via magic. But listen, we'll get into that. There's a whole lot more of that to come. But I, I don't oh, want to yeah. freak you. There's a there's a little there's a little fairy dust coming. Uh, <laughs> yes, there's a. There's a lot I forgot in in this in this final third of, of of Dream Warriors. I really never thought that this particular film connected directly to Jason Goes to Hell, but we found it. Everyone, it's happened. It's those, dam- it's those damn Tinker Bells again. Uh, I tell you, they are the source of all evil. But I, I don't want to alarm you, Gina. We are not alone. That's right. We have a special guest. He's a writer, director, and podcaster from the show Popular Music, which is available everywhere podcasts are. He's the one, the only, Omar Najam. How are you doing, Omar? Great. I'm doing fantastic. I get to talk about this this piece of art with both of you. This is so exciting. (laughs) This is a lot of people's favorites, and I totally get it why, because there's some super cool shit in it. But uh, just to let people know, what was your first exposure to any of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies? This is, I know I'm going to get, I'm going to get some, some harassment about this. But Mm -hmm. my first, my first introduction was that I can recall specifically was the Simpsons uh, treehouse that okay. had Willie being uh, Freddy Krueger. But the thing is, here's the twist. I did recognize the reference they were making. So I <laughs> somehow knew about uh, Nightmare, but I, I I don't know the exact time. And then a, li- a few years later, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit down and just watch them. I'm just going to do it. What's going on? And I fell in love with the fact that you could, I think I watched, which one did I watch first? It might've been the next one that I watched. Part four, yeah. It was very popular movie. Um, Does part four have the comic book stuff? Oh, I think that might be five. I don't want to get, it might be five. I think it was five. I think it was five because it references some of the stuff that's talked about in terms of the origins that, yeah, it was five. So yeah, I was just like, great, dream stuff, perfect. (laughs) Great. Why Why wouldn't you? You have a slasher movie where it's like, and after this, every other slasher movie has been real difficult because it's like, there's someone in the woods. It's like, yeah, but I mean, you know, it's not like they can turn into a tractor or all the trees are now hands. So True. like, <laughs> yeah. unless you're, I, unless, unless you're in the, unless you're in the evil dead, then, then the trees kind of exactly. turn into hands. Exactly. That's the only, that's the, that's the only other universe that kind of like does a one up on this. Cause you can't wake up from evil dead. You're just like, we're going on vacation. It's like, well, good luck. <laughs> yeah, there's a do. lot of fantastical shit that happens in Evil Dead that that puts it over. The, I also feel like Evil Dead tries for big scope on a dime real mm-hmm. early, whereas I think the sequence in this part of the movie may be the most fantastical to date, where they actually said, "Hey, you know what? We've got a couple extra bucks. Let's hire out <laughs> an entire soundstage." And they're like. What? Are you crazy? Like, yeah, like something where there would be multiple levels. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> I guess we can afford that. But someone's going to have to die in a hallway. How about two people? Sold. Perfect. Cut away. We'll get one stab. <laughs> we got it. We got it. The audience knows what's up. 
I mean, it's at, at at one point both a fantastical movie, and then it somewhat pairs things down needlessly at points, almost as if it's trying to save money for something else. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll get into it, but I think that you're not going to catch flack for that. You, you have to be of a certain age to have caught this in, in its first run, obviously. I mean, I don't think I saw one in the movie theater until the fifth one. So let's get into it. We're going to rejoin this movie uh, Dream Warriors, but first we have to know who is still left alive at this point in the movie. Almost everyone. <laughs> as as Freddy has been operating in a quality over quantity sitch up until this moment. Let's start with Kristen. She'll tumble for you, but deep down, it's really for her. Then we have Nancy. She's a rock star grad student in the streets and a dream warrior in the sheets. Then we have Will, and like Trumpy from Pod People, he can do magic things. <laughs> then, of course, there's Joey, who took his debate team rep into the big house and tore ass all the way to the top, baby. It's like Penitentiary 4, this white guy with a disappearing teardrop tattoo. And then, of course, we have Taryn. She still remains beautiful and bad. And Kincaid, who basically gets to be a Kool-Aid kid if he was haunted by a dream demon. It's just a lot of yelling and breaking through walls. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we have Dr. Sims. Uh, the buck doesn't so much stop with her as pass by so quickly it creates a sonic boom. <laughs> Can you really count her? Because she just kind of disappears. Like, she does not show up again for the rest of the movie. No, she's a means to an end. She's the physical villain, as it were, the non-believer who refuses to give any quarter to this fantastical crap. But she does make a brief appearance, and she doesn't die. So I suppose she's no worse for wear, and uh, that leaves us, of course, with Craig Wasson, a, let me refer to my notes here, a quote-unquote actor. Okay. <laughs> an alleged an alleged performer. Rumor has it he's been hired to say words written in script form in front of people either on stage or on camera. So therefore, he qualifies as an actor regardless of how <laughs> we feel about how he did in this particular film. He has a he has a stunning range of emotions. He goes from puzzled to befuddled. From uh, confused to, why won't you just listen to me? Just in a matter of (laughs) moments. It's just very subtle. We have been ragging on Craig Wasson now for two episodes in a row. And if if the audience was wondering, are they going to keep this up? The answer is yes. (laughs) He is a, is a, a, a black hole from which no charisma can escape. (laughs) <laughs> we rejoin the action after a ghost nun has backed up a dump truck of Fred Krueger backstory and buried the audience in it right before we watch Craig Wasson do a bit of this door is heavy business that is quite unconvincing. <laughs> it's it's like I feel like every theater kid should do that moment as like a, <laughs> as like a warm up. Where it's like, how do you, how do I, how do I exist in an environment? Well, according to (laughs) Nightmare on Elm Street 3, grab what is maybe a styrofoam door and just put your shoulder into it. (laughs) He does not do prop work well. He doesn't work well in space, let's say. It's not his forte you know i ghost story just repopped up on shutter and i haven't had a chance to watch it so that i can see his penis on green screen <laughs> um but i i do wonder if he's better in that film than he is here i just i do know that more penis is involved well i mean it's the just thing the clothing is, yep the thing is that like in in uh in in body double which is an extremely guilty pleasure of mine he mm-hmm. he has the the interesting challenge of playing someone who is a bad actor which is i mean the character is is supposed to be a a bad actor and and i i understand that it is challenging for someone who can sing to pretend that they can't sing Mm -hmm. i i i'm just wondering if it's difficult for a bad actor to be bad at acting like a bad actor right i i I do remember he kind of had these slightly open mouth sort of you know kind of, kind of, you know kind of like when you when you play fetch with a dog and then you fake them out 
and they just sort of look mm. like the fuck where, where, where's the where's the stick why do you still have it just that sort of like <laughs> you know mixture of confusion and and betrayal and, and a little a little bit of fear like the, <laughs> like he just sort of woke up that morning on a sound stage and like well this might as well happen <laughs> Oh, poor Mr. Wasp. I'm sure he does a lot for charity. Um, he, he apparently has quite a fruitful career narrating audiobooks, yes. which is probably a, a, a you know, much better use of his talents. Maybe he comes across with his, when you don't see his face, everything like suddenly comes to life. And without <laughs> that visage and that, that weird curly hair that's in, set in uh, <laughs> hockey mode. Um, perhaps it's more convincing that you don't have to see him 24 says it's either voice or it's genitals with him uh, is what I'm picking up. I'm picking right. up that the, the middle ground of this film is really, it's really where we get into the tricky territory. This it's gotta be one or the other. This part, this, this movie, he should either play the part as a ghost or dick swinging. All the way. <laughs> yeah. And I, to be honest with you, I'd rather have the latter. But let's <laughs> let's get into some partial nudity. Uh, let's cut to uh, Nancy, um, who is urging Freddie to let Joey, the teardrop killer, out of his coma state, only to have Fred send Nancy a message via chest chat to, quote unquote, come and get him, bitch. Now, this is going to be a little awkward for Joey if he does, in fact, live through this. And convince a real woman to take <laughs> his shirt off. Like, that's a weird convo you're going to have with someone who just agreed to sleep with you. Like, <laughs> why are you keeping your shirt on? Um, reasons, shirt comes off. What do you mean, <laughs> come and get me, bitch? Who the fuck are you? Door slam. This Joey is my sits romance. In the corner. That's, when you, that's when you get the, the cover-up tattoo that says Thug Life. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, yeah, it's yeah, going to be one hell of a typeface. Yeah. <laughs> right. I I think he may I he does spoiler alert for a movie that I haven't watched, but he does live until some part of part four, and I I don't remember if he takes off his shirt in it, but I'm going to be really interested to see if he scars up or heals from his mm-hmm. giant chest tat of "Come and get me, bitch," <laughs> written in which uh, Hazel uh, font. Uh, meanwhile, Dr. Sims sedates Kristen after a very hard to understand screaming session in the hallway and condemns her to the quiet room. Did you, either of you, understand anything that came out of Kristen's mouth during that scene? Now, she was like in full Tasmanian devil mode. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I, I agree with you there. It's like a pitch only dogs can hear. I think maybe if you slowed it down and reversed it, maybe you might call up a demon. I'm not sure. You get the real message. It was, I just love the communication of like, I get it because things are being thrown. Mm -hmm. And Doc just like barely dodges, like turns to watch it fly by. It's the most casual, just like, nah, I'm not going to get hit. It's not going to happen. No, she doesn't have much of a pitching arm. This is not her strong suit. She was not on the local softball team uh, for high school. So uh, everyone is safe. The only um, throw that I've seen that's worse, of course, we might hearken back to the original first scene of Friday the 13th, in which a woman throws an empty cardboard box to the side of a camera in the hopes that she does not hit it. And they're like, perfect. Moving on. <laughs> we got it. It's in the can. We got it. We got the got shot. it in one. There's a lot of got it in one in that movie and this one too. <laughs> Elsewhere, a different part of the city, which very much looks like North Hollywood, I think. Yes. Uh, Craig is driving Nancy around and uh, he, you know, comes out with the information that he's learned from Ghost Nun. We've got to bury Freddy in hallowed ground and only one man and his hair that's so real he can swim in it. And only he knows the truth. He knows where that body is buried. So let's cut to the Little Nemo's bar for ex-husbands who want to drink good (laughs) and forget other things good. It's time to re-meet the detective with an elective for smoldering good looks. The one, the only, John fucking Saxon. And if you don't add the fucking, you're not really saying his whole name. (laughs) It's It's on his driver's license. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's very true. It's his government name. Now you may say uh, you get you get a you get a check written out to him from him. It says it says John fucking Saxon right at the top. <laughs> If if you try to cash that in without that, the bank is like, no, yeah. sorry, it's. I, <laughs> this is I don't know who this, this is. is. Clearly, this is clearly a forgery. <laughs> this is fake. <laughs> this is fake. Yeah, we the only person out, we with drink. an account here is John Fucking Saxon. Did you get the check from him? Because <laughs> he withdrew all his cash to buy shots of alcohol to mix with his cans of Miller. So <laughs> <laughs> that is one of those things. I have never done. And granted, I grew up Mormon, so I might not be the most experienced drinker <laughs> on the face of the planet. I, I no longer suffer that affliction. But I have never done the whole beer back with mm -hmm. a shot of whatever. Is that something I need to do, Gina? No, <laughs> you do not. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, well, I, I have this steak, so I'm going to have, have a chaser of this, you know, McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it. a good enough yep. answer for me. I'm going to ask you both, and I, I don't know, Omar, when the last time you saw the original was, uh, but I'll ask it anyways. Uh, you may or may not know the answer, uh, but Gina probably will have an opinion here. Who plays a better drunk? John Saxon or Joyce, his ex-wife? Oh, Joyce. Absolutely. Oh. Joyce. Yes. You don't need that, that charisma that John Saxon brings to being whiskey drunk doesn't do it for you. He, to he the doesn't, quite same he doesn't seem, he doesn't seem all that different than, than, than he was in the, in the first movie. He, you know, kind of glowering and angry. He just doesn't yeah. seem all that different. Whereas, you know, Joyce had that 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 moodiness down where she was like she was, you know, alternately kind of motherly and then sort of like dismissive. You know, she kind of yeah, I, I think that, you know, you know, Ronnie Blakely was trying to be a little method with this slasher movie <laughs> supporting character. Like she based this character on a real person. Or she was or yes. she was, you know, you know, drunk off her ass every day of shooting. Who knows? <laughs> She's just sauced on set. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she she was very method and and just got completely plastered on a schlitz every morning. <laughs> Not I, to get I, too far into the film, but there's mm -hmm. like a moment where I believe he drives a car. Yes, and then it was only a few minutes for me later that I was like, wait, he shouldn't. Ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. It's 1987. It wasn't a thing yet. I, I, my <laughs> memory serves drunk driving was still a crime at the time. Right. Right. <laughs> Especially. Oh, he's, de oh, he's definitely one of those, uh, one of those, uh, drinking makes me a better driver. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I can see the road better. Everything slows down for me. <laughs> oh, you know, somebody who's, who's claimed that, have, do you? Okay. I've heard, I've heard some things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've been around long enough to hear that one. Um, so needless to say, Nancy comes in, tries to convince uh, her dad, please tell me where you buried the serial killer. He's like, uh, not today, princess, yeah. which is really fucking dismissive. <laughs> like, does he call her princess in the first movie? I couldn't quite remember. I don't Ooh. think so. I think he was just supposed to sound like, you know, kind of like a, you know, just a unhelpful asshole yeah well <laughs> mission accomplished i mean mission accomplished in the way that i still get lost in his eyes and want to maybe want to help him out and you know listen we don't have to become a couple maybe we just become best friends you know something just along that out. line just yes, i just want to hang out i just want to get some <laughs> cool hair tips to make it look fuller that's all saxon oozes more screen presence in three lines than wasson does in the entire previous hour <laughs> <laughs> which uh, is unfair to Craig Wasson, but also uh, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it, motherfucker. You might as well come to play. What are you going to do? So, the bar is high. <laughs> the bar is very high. But we get uh, Craig Wasson gets a call from his agent telling him he's no longer allowed in the business. And then he gets another page saying there's been an incident. Uh, the kids are saying they've drugged Kristen. They put her in the quiet room. You have to come quick. So he's like, oh, I got to go. And Nancy's like, no, 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 wait. I'll do that part. And once again, this is my main problem with the third act of this movie. Nancy should be fighting Freddy in the real world. Kristen should take over the leadership position in the dream world. 
And that way they fight from both ends to stop Freddy. You could still kill Nancy off in a meaningful way. That's my major plot problem with the movie. Everything else I'm cool with, to be honest with you. It it does kind of you know, start showing the plot holes about the, you know <laughs> you know around about the last 25 minutes or so i still can't quite figure out how one hypnotizes themselves which that has happened twice in this movie yeah, yes people just stare yeah. at it like all right time to get me time for me to join the group and the it takes like five it. seconds she's very susceptible apparently and it, 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 we have to hearken back to something here uh, regarding John Saxon. He's now a security guard, which that means that the police report that he filed stating that the burned husk of his ex-wife slowly descending into a phantasm pit was in fact her suicide did not go over well with uh, did not go over well enough for him for him to retain his job with the Elm Street PD, right. which is really saying something with that crew. Considering they haven't cracked the crime that Encyclopedia Brown didn't solve first, but okay, <laughs> sure, he gets to be the security guard. He's the one who responds <laughs> to a scream of help. Everyone else is like, I don't know, maybe I should stay across the street. <laughs> <laughs> so Nancy does try to get. Uh, her dad to spill where he's hit that the old bones of Fred. Um, but he's given the whole thing a pass, uh, which is maybe part of the reason why he uh, wasn't that swell of a father in the first place. So this yes. brings another question to bear. Who is the worst dad so far in the Nightmare on Elm Street series? Is it <sighs> Nancy's dad or is it Jesse's dad? Uh, Omar, I, I'm going to ask you this question first. Here's why I'm going to keep the uh, my vote mm-hmm. on this side of the table with Nancy's dad is because he is convinced shortly after with what I think is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, he gets my vote just because like his daughter is like, all right, I'm going to go do some stuff. Uh, you want to go talk to him? And he's like, sure. Uh, stand up. And he's like, yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, sure. What do you need? What do you need to know? <laughs> I think it's a delay tactic. I think he's trying to juke him and and leave him in that 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 junk pile. But uh, that yeah, are you are you well. re- are you really going to be intimidated by Craig Wasson? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Craig Wasson threatens you with physical violence. How he doesn't just burst into laughter is beyond me. And it shows you the professionalism <laughs> of one John fucking Saxon. Uh, so that question now goes to you, Gina. Who is the worst dad so far in the Nightmare Elm Street series? Well, I mean, Jesse's dad is just kind of an incompetent asshole. Whereas, <laughs> whereas like, you know, he, they, they moved his hands. So he didn't know anything. Uh, about uh-huh. freddy so he was just kind of you know, but he also doesn't of, know how houses work or birds or or, or anything <laughs> or <birds>. like that <laughs> he doesn't understand how birds work <laughs> um, but but he, I mean, he, he accuses still- jesse of blowing up a bird by being on drugs that's not how birds <laughs> and drugs work <laughs> Um, but but he he one point that he has over every other parent in the Elm Street series so far is uh-huh. that he does not know about Freddy Krueger, and so, everyone else is aware and, and denies his existence. Everybody else is aware. They took part and made some sort of. I mean, we're we're three movies in, and we still have no explanation as to why they they you know made a pact to never tell their kids what <laughs> happened. Uh, that is so true. Yeah. Outside of the the desire to remain, you know, not looked upon like a murderer in their children's eyes. Yeah, but, um, but once mean, they but, start dying off, they should probably pony up that info. Yeah, don't don't mm-hmm. treat, you know, make your kids feel like that they're you're going crazy. They're gaslighting their own children. Right. I yeah. mean, they, they they know what's causing this. But there's like, no, no, you're just imagining it. Well, I think you want to tell them. And again, we, we <laughs> talked we talked about this. You, you don't think you'd be kind of impressed if one of your parents told you that they got together a bunch of other parents and, you know, killed a child murderer? I mean, <laughs> I would think that was kind of... I would think that was kind of cool, honestly. I mean, to date, the coolest thing about my dad uh, when I was growing up is, one, he owned a Porsche for about five years. Two, Mm -hmm. he had an excellent mustache. And three is he started a a recycling business before it was cool. And that's it. That literally, there's (laughs) no other thing. If he came to me and said, oh, one other thing I did when you were growing up is I killed a child murderer. (laughs) Like, you are awesome. (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my you father. You want to move he, into the house when you're elderly? Yeah, I mean, my father, he had he had a, a tattoo of a snake on his forearm, forearm and dated a 30-year-old woman when he was 18. That's it. That That's my <laughs> cool dad stories. And you know, my dad hung around with bikers. He absolutely, if he came to me and said, I killed a child murderer, I'd be like, yeah, that's on brand. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> So Nancy storms off with, uh, but uh, Craig has a plan. He's going to stay back and work this stinking drunk while Nancy uh, hunts Freddy in the dreamscape. And this is a bad plan. Uh, Wasson (laughs) drives to a local Catholic church to dunk a whiskey bottle into the holy water and steal a cross. Which he, he is didn't, he didn't unsuccessful steal it. He doing. His, he left his driver's license as a deposit. It's just the best. Like he's like he's renting ping pong paddles. <laughs> Not like it's a lending library or something. <laughs> it's my favorite. Like he gets caught, and the priest is like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, I just uh, I just need this." <laughs> Like, I feel like if you explained to a gentleman of the cloth in church that I have to go fight an abomination of God, they wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, I love, yeah, give me your lease license. Like, they would be like, yeah, 100%. What, what can I help? Like, what can I, this is my job. Like, yeah. I, I do sermons, and then on the side, I stop demons that are hunting down children. Yeah, what do you I need? come with. Is, yeah. Is, maybe you should have him there on site during this. <laughs> Yeah, I've done this before. Uh, yeah. I've got this God stuff on lock. It's kind of my job <laughs> is what this guy should say. But no, he just is left at the end of the scene staring at a driver's license like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? <laughs> yeah. That was a real good cross. That was one of my favorites. Definitely top five cross of this whole church. <laughs> that was my go-to cross. <laughs> like, yeah. I did so much with that cross. That no one respects it. Cross. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a team one cross. I always go to it. Uh, so uh, later at uh, Penny Brothers Auto Salvage, uh, Wasson and mm-hmm. Craig uh, fucking Saxon are on the hunt uh, for them bones in a late model Nissan pickup. Let's cut to Nancy. She can't get to Kristen, but she can draft the other three kids to die. Oh, I'm sorry. Go into Kristen's dream without any sort of formal plan other nope. than let's try it and see what happens. Uh, let's stick and, together right away. If they all get lost. <laughs> they immediately get lost. That plan lasts exactly 90 seconds. I timed <laughs> it. Yeah, Kincaid's a little overconfident here. And, uh, but Nancy, once again, has this plan. Let's stick together. Let's go to the quiet room sequence. Once Nancy is both able to hypnotize them and herself, as Gina has pointed out. Wait, wait, can we, can we mention that, that again, in, in the, the uh, horror movie trope of the, the completely understaffed hospital, Mm -hmm. even though she, she has to beg to be let in to see the other, the the other kids, she just sneaks them out of the the break room and, and, and and takes them into the quiet room. Just, you know, all right, kids, we're going to go to this other room now, even though I'm not (laughs) supposed to be here. It's a little spurious, but, and then no one goes to check on them. I guess a lot of this happens in, in overlapping order. And they, I I also, I also, can we, can we also point out the fact that they did not, Clean up the explosion from the television. <laughs> There's still like this the huge burn mark, scorch mark on yep. the wall. Where- <laughs> Again, uh, that goes unexplained by anyone. How this girl was able to leap like a fucking NBA player and slam dunk her own head into a TV monitor. But okay, everyone. Yes, it's still it- where we all hang out. <laughs> so, oh, we yeah. still kick it there where our friend jumped into a television set it's the Face best first i mean, I mean this this, this uh, after this movie this hospital basically was just you know converted into some luxury housing right oh, yeah no no yeah this, this i mean every, everybody everybody was just losing, everybody was just losing their licenses yeah they're just the state is pulling licenses left and right starting with craig fucking wasn <laughs> We love to kid, but here's something that I genuinely, genuinely love. Once again, the set design in this movie is on fucking point. That quiet room sequence is just, it's dazzling Mm -hmm. how they make tilting shadows and shafts of light 
and these rips in the padding work as a suspense sequence, I love it. It looks weird. It looks daunting. It looks like they're in trouble. And I really enjoyed that. It is genuinely terrifying. Uh, Because you don't know where he's coming from and you're in Mm -hmm. his space and nothing proves it like I can do anything. Once again, I if for those counting at home, 90 seconds before everyone split up. And <laughs> nine zero. So let's start with uh the dreams one by one. Let's start with Kristen. Uh she gets the back to the future two treatment, looping back uh, to the opening scene with quiet, cool, still blasting out of her one speaker radio. Say what you will about Elaine. She never lets a dude know where that bourbon is. Yeah, she's very protective. Of the she, well, she, you know, she, she doesn't want to have let him have the good bourbon right away. <laughs> no, yeah. not well. And maybe after, if you if you treat it right, maybe then you get the good bourbon. <laughs> you can earn the bourbon. Right. You have not. Yeah, in that, trade, that bourbon is for good boys. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Freddie interrupts this by doing his usual kill your mom routine. Uh, Mm -hmm. By grabbing her through a doorway, decapitating her, and then Dreamy Lane continues to nag Kristen from the great beyond. She never changes. Can't get a break. (laughs) No. Also, um, Freddy is dressed in a tux. He he looks good. He he looks smithy. Maybe he'd have a better look if he went to this week's sponsor, theblacktux.com. Note from sponsor, tell a funny personal experience about renting a tux. Fuck that. You ain't paid me, Black Tux. Come and get me. That was a freebie. You you, you went an entirely different direction. I was going to go political and say, <laughs> and say, that, and say that, that, that Freddie looks better in a tuxedo than our current sitting president does. <laughs> I mean, at least Freddie went to a fucking tailor. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone in that family know how to stand when a photo is being taken? <laughs> Why do they always look like Frankenstein with a couple parts of his spine missing? And they're just going like, turkey, turkey, hello. They, they all look like they're in one of those carnival cutouts where you stick your head through the hole. <laughs> and, and sometimes you're like a gorilla holding a lady in a bikini. They just, they just, like, <laughs> they just stick their head in a hole with like a, another person's picture on the on the on this, on this panel <laughs> oh my god he's such a terrible person and the looks department is just like if it was just looks everyone that would be one thing but it's everything <laughs> else you're just confronted with the bad looks every time you're you read another terrifying story the total <sighs> shitty package there's just no redeeming <laughs> like this is a child murderer with knives for fingers who goes into people's dreams and destroys them but we can say he wears a tux right. Like, you know, like, it's <laughs> we're, I, we're, we're willing to give anything to anyone. Like I would genuinely vote for Freddy Krueger over <laughs> Donald Trump I, if, in a head-to-head contest. And I don't care what party Fred is, because I, I think he would have a tough time in the Dem runoffs and everything. Because, you know, 20-plus uh, uh, child murders, and that was before he died. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, buried in a trunk. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of skeletons in his closet that are literal yes. skeletons. But I, totally, I, I think he has a better plan for America. I mean, yeah. we we may have to knife some people in dreams and everything, but my guess is, is that he wouldn't be so terrible when it comes to tariffs and economic opportunity and allowing people to grab uh, someone's money who's, you know, booked themselves through college and only needed a loan to get themselves through. And he's like, no, 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 no. take them for all they got. And then you know, kill some kids <laughs> at the border and oh, God damn it. And for everyone saying, don't. Don't insert politics into to your horror talk. Guess what, everybody? We're living in a horror movie. <laughs> um, and we don't have to be. We're only a year away from changing some of this shit, everyone. Just let's pull it the fuck together. All right. <laughs> Feather transition to Taryn in her beautiful and bad drag. And oh, she man, happens she is, upon... She is just covered in body glitter i i I love it she's just she's shimmering 
Mm-hmm. And yes. They definitely they they definitely cleared out every Claire's boutique in a tri <laughs> entire tri state area. I bet she smelled like just like that fake grape smell. <laughs> it must have been wonderful scent of lip gloss. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, permeating every nostril on that set. I know that deep down they were going for that X Men Storm circa the Mutant Massacre storyline. That's a deep cut, everyone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, <laughs> That's great. But from the back, Taryn looks more like Ed Grimley gone goth. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the way the hair is constructed. It has nothing from the front, badass. From the back, it's a little too excited to be on Wheel of Fortune. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a deep Ed Grimley cut. <laughs> <laughs> Old man. Alert. All right. So this is where I feel the movie doesn't quite live up to my memory of it. <laughs> because when it comes to cinematic knife fights, there have been mm-hmm. some great ones. We're not even talking swords here. We're just talking straight up knives. Well, I just watched a West Side story. That's a bit more cinematic. I'll tell you. This is basically three bad swipes and the knife fight is over. It just. Right. I feel like there should be more fight to the knife fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they they, they, they definitely, uh, uh, Taryn and Will go out pretty fast and also no one mentions them again, which is, which nope. is kind of a little, they're just, they're just dead and nobody says, hey, where, 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 where Taryn and Will go? Remember them? They're forgotten. Nope. They're out of sight, out of mind. It's like they never existed. <laughs> there is an opportunity later for them to acknowledge it and they don't. <laughs> There is a moment where you can be like, and here's the results of like all the people who got hurt. And they're like, no, 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 that wasn't, it didn't matter. Like the only person who died was Nancy and then everyone else just disappeared. (laughs) Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. The weird thing is like the sound design drops out for, for a couple of lines for Freddie and and it's just the actor going, Hey, um, uh, you want, you know, please don't hurt me. <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> wait, 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 where's the deep voice? And then in the next scene with Will, it gets too deep. Yeah, yeah he's got that. He's definitely got that Buffalo Bill thing going on again. Like uh... <laughs> made up for it. He completely made up for it. He was just like, oh, yeah, this- you think you're a wizard? Huh? <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. All right, Bluto, uh, back up off that. <laughs> He jabs, he transforms his hands into drug needles. And then. Which looks like the drug. It looks like the drugs are Windex. Yes. Uh, It's a big street Ah. drug. Everyone loves injecting Windex. It's huge, super popular in 1987. The the arm effect is is pretty gross and and pretty effective. With her her track marks opening up. That was was pretty (laughs) pretty icky. And he comes at her. With his palms down at first, which I don't, I don't quite un, like. He saw that her arms are ver, are vertical. Everyone, <laughs> they're up and down mechanisms. They're not really side to side. So he, he really should have come at it with his palms, you know, towards his face or the opposite. Either one, yeah. But probably more natural with your palms like facing you and jabbed her. But instead, he goes sideways, horizontal, and then turns. <laughs> see, see, you know, you notice that. I notice that Freddie doesn't know how drugs work. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he, he, he's like, you know, rolling his eyes back in like some sort of orgasmic swoon, and then like, and then says, then says, "What a rush!" Like Freddie, you cheat the one that got the drug. All right, never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he there's no mutual like a taking of the Windex here, but he's just like, you know, <laughs> oh yeah, here comes that hit. It's like, no, Freddie, no, that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you are I the, mean, you are the, the giver of the drug. Yeah, well, yes. yeah, but we don't. We, we need Freddie to be sexual. We don't need Freddie to be sexual. Not necessarily, but like, who could blame him? Like, she's a total babe, and <laughs> um. She has a lot of body glitter on, and you know how attractive that is to red-blooded men. <laughs> that thick, thick layer of glitter. That uh, <laughs> it's like they, Dazzler just <laughs> all the time. <laughs> oh, she's like one more coat away from being a Twilight vampire. <laughs> <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. R.I.P.D. Taryn, we will miss you. Uh, we needed more scanner veins. Uh, they give a, her we'll a couple miss scanner we'll, veins, but not nearly enough. 
we we will miss we will miss you more than the other characters in the movie do apparently top of the list uh as far as i'm concerned so feather transition to an enchanted hallway that's <laughs> oh, right yeah. everyone in your dreams you can do anything and be anywhere will you know where will's going to face his greatest fear the uh, hallway <laughs> <laughs> a, hallway a slightly with a, bowing a, hallway a hallway with a changeling wheelchair in it <laughs> yeah and yet the changeling wheelchair is way more scary than this for multiple reasons this comes off a bit ableist in the cold yes. light of day i mean yeah i mean let's let's on the real to real it's not in, it's not necessarily intentional these are different times but come on like I, I just don't yeah, think I mean he's flat out taunting today. this kid because he can't walk yeah that's not that's not cool dream demon I mean, you know, make, you child know, murder of 20 plus old, children make, make fun of him being a big old nerd don't 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 make fun of him because he can't walk <laughs> yeah I mean the wall the not walking um, thing that can't be helped the thing is, Will's able to evade this wheelchair. Uh, he only gets one cut on his leg. But he rises up like a regular vampire with a very big collar. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was on. like, wait a minute, that's and not this- a wizard cape? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Count Chocula with wizard <laughs> powers. I mean, there are many reasons why I wanted Omar on the show again. First of all, he's a very funny guest. He's Thank game. You. For all our goofiness, uh, you genuinely love horror, but you are also the closest thing to a wizard master that I, quote unquote, (laughs) internet know. So my question to you is, what did Will do wrong and what is the better play to defeat a dream demon? So he shot. Okay, so (laughs) because he does like a a spell blast, right? Mm -hmm. Some kind of green snake of flying out of his fingers. Yeah. I mean, I really do feel like you could cast hold person first. Mm-hmm. So Freddy can't, although Freddy might be able to see the Freddy has magic. That's, I think the biggest error here is like you're fighting magic with magic. But then it should um, be a duel of magics. That's my thing. Yes. Like, if you're going to go, I'm going to come at him with magic and he's like, well, fuck this. You know what? I'm going to change your environment or I'm going to come at you a different way or I'm going to make the wheelchair into a transformer. Like it should be a magic on magic fight. Yes. Not, uh, I attack you with green snake de- animation. Yep. And he's like, uh, get this off of me. Let me lift you very high up into the air. Exactly. And so now I'm just going to physically do all this. see that yeah. wire. <laughs> and I'm going to just go physically yep. pick yep. you up. And this becomes his thing in this movie. Gina, do you remember him picking people up by the throat in all the other movies? Like, this is my go-to gag. <laughs> no, I think he just might have seen it in another movie and said, oh, that looks cool. Let me try that. Like the the lift and stab, yeah. The last thing he saw before he was burned alive was Star Wars. And he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be I'm gonna Darth Vader these motherfuckers. I'm gonna put that in my little murder file. <laughs> <laughs> Ding ding slam well it, it's definitely n- now i mean freddie doesn't entirely count because he's a supernatural being but but that is definitely a a common trope in both horror and action movies that that does not and could not carry over into real life because i don't think there's anyone who could pick up another person by their neck i mean mm. maybe, maybe a child but definitely not another not another adult but it, it just yes. it, it looks super cool so we're gonna keep doing it also, people have the ability to kick, even when being choked. That's the other thing. You yes. really expose a very vulnerable area to lots of uh, toes and, and pointy shoes. And I feel like most people in that position would just start kicking, kicking as hard as they can. And no one in this movie seems to get the concept. You can kick back. If you are stuck in a Freddy attack situation, I know it's scary. It's kind of like when you fall on ice. <laughs> You're going to get like shock, but the thing is to keep your head because the next few seconds are crucial. Remember, you got arms that are now Mm -hmm. close to his face and you have legs that are all over up on his body. Uh, Every region of him is now vulnerable. 
And so he kind of has put you into an advantageous situation where you can do one strike, two strikes, if you're able to, three or four strikes at the same time. You just can't headbutt. That's the main thing you can't yeah. do. That's all that's really been taken from you in the current second. That's, that is very true. There, That is a non-headbutt situation you find yourself in. So, you know, we could get into a long, long, long discussion of how Freddy's immunity to the wizard master stuff sort of violates the rules of the nightmare on Elm street universe because mm -hmm. people can fight back in dreams with dream powers because Freddie also uses dreams. So they should be able to affect him in the same way he affects others. But right. I guess not. He's like, I don't give a shit about this wizard shit stab in the chest. <laughs> and that's it. Come on, like we have a weak ass knife fight. Like, give me, you know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, 45 minutes of it, but, you know, give me a nice, tight, you know, back alleyway knife fight. And here, let's yep. do some wizard shit. God damn yep. it. I don't want to end, start and end on green finger snakes. And then he's like, eh, and it's done. Yeah. Nowadays, Yay. it would be different. I feel like with D and D being so big now, yes, we would. That would be a forty-minute sequence. It would be a <laughs> Doctor Strange level yes. encounter. Where it's like charm person. Okay, Freddy can't hurt me now. You go do your thing. Magic missile. Let's mage hand like his you know shoes together. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. See, already you are to me. You have earned the rank of wizard master. It's not <laughs> just you. a cloak with an insanely large collar on it that that gives you that designation. I, I do bring it everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you have to. Otherwise, people won't know. It's, I, otherwise, you're just wearing a T-shirt that says right. it. Right. Doesn't have the same effect. <laughs> I completely cut up Dina. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, that, that's okay. Uh, I was going to say, it, it sort of feels like that they it, it occurred to them, oh, shit, we only have 12 minutes left. We better just, you know, just <laughs> blow right through everything. <laughs> like They could have spent some of the time with all of the Craig Wasson inserted into the movie <laughs> to make me take that money and redirect it into really cool knife fights and wizard fights. That's why, that's why I'm showing up. I'm not showing up for Craig Wasson's O face. Let's just <laughs> get him awkwardly trying to date a recent grad student. Like, Ooh. come on. Ugh. <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> so uh, finally, uh, Nancy reunites with Kristen. And oh, yeah, Kincaid bursts into the room with a refreshing flavored sugar water style. And then um, a magic door appears. And you know what that means, that it's time to go on a descent into Freddy's boiler room. And you can tell that we're in a dream here because no spiral staircase like that would ever exist in the real world without a handrail. Mm -hmm. And that means that Freddy's biggest nightmare is probably OSHA. <laughs> <laughs> so many violations. Oh my God. That is not a working, that none of that is, is working condition ready. You can't just have a bunch of exposed child skeletons just hanging out. You can't tie somebody up with free flowing tongues uh, over a hell pit. It's not, come on, man. Where's the safety rigs? It shouldn't that be ergonomic. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, at a junk heap, uh. Craig Wasson struggles to open a rusted car trunk with one hand. One hand. <laughs> Again, he doesn't quite understand how objects work. And <laughs> maybe more effort is required than one hand to open a rusted car trunk. So finally, he employs a, a shovel to help him pry it open, which is like the bare minimum. So... I think that's prime Craig Wasson. When you need the bare minimum, he's there, baby. There it is. <laughs> uh, back in the dreamscape, every red gel in town has been hired to give this set a hellacious glow. And as I said earlier in the podcast, I think this might be the largest set ever used on a Nightmare on Elm Street film to that date. It's got multiple levels. It has some fire effects. It looks like something that have should have a stunt show attached to it. I love it. It's so impressive. It's like <laughs> unbelievably impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so once they determine, uh, okay, Freddy's here. 
Joey's uh, uh, suspended over this pit by uh, independent tongues. Uh, Nancy leaps into action by leaps. I mean, gingerly goes down a pipe and she starts to fight Freddy while everyone else watches. This doesn't go well. So in comes Kristen. And you haven't seen this much unmotivated flipping since George <laughs> Lucas directed a Star Wars entry. <laughs> she's, she's fighting via flips. Yeah, she does. She does that cool like she... running up the wall thing, which 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 is always always fun to see in a movie. That's right. Early parkour. Um, this is what we want. This is what we want out of a Freddy fight. Uh, just give me some flips and some kicks, kicks <laughs> that you land on your back afterwards. She's not uh, black widowing out of that motherfucker. She just lands no. straight on her back. Yep. Just, you know, complete that turn. You would have been fine, but no. <laughs> so we talked about Freddie's big move that he picks everyone up by the throat. I still, I don't, I don't know why it took until the third act of this movie for that to become Freddie's thing, but he loves to pick people up by the throat. And in the middle of this, when he's just about to finally uh, dig his knives into somebody, uh, Freddy senses that his bones are being moved, question mark, and teleports away. Uh, just this vanishes. is where we just learn. Just straight up vanishes. Yes, just straight up ghosts everyone inside of his murder lair. <laughs> and then we cut back to the auto lot. And it, we this is where we learn that unlike Principal Dad in Hello, Mary Lou, Prom Night 2, neither John fucking Saxon or Craig Wasson has a grave digging sweater. I mean, they're <laughs> fucking lost. We learned in that movie that it's best to have a nice cable knit sweater when you're when you're uh, when you're digging up a grave. It uh, really helps uh, to be bundled up when digging a grave. Um, <laughs> so Freddie uses his well-established telekinesis powers, see balls in Freddie's Revenge, and uh, he starts up a bunch of junker cars and topples an entire stack of them onto that poor late model Nissan. Uh, and this is where we begin the Jason and the Argonauts portion of this movie as his skeleton fights people. And it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's definitely some some moments where, where you could see that, that uh, it is n- not actually connecting with the human actors, but, but yeah. it, it's, it's, it's pretty neat looking. It is pretty neat looking. Um, and I'm not entirely sure of this because I, I rewound it a couple times, but it certainly looks this way to me that Freddie skeleton picks up John Saxon by the balls and throws him. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so these are two new things we've learned about Freddie. One likes to grab throats Two likes to grab balls and throw <laughs> people by said balls. Once again, Freddie balls it's two movies in a row. If, if there are balls in, in movie four, we've got a trend, everyone. <laughs> uh, and just like that, uh, Saxon lands on a jagged piece of metal. And good night, sweet prince. And your beautifully uh, outlined eyes that I desperate to stare deeply into. Uh, John Saxon, uh, you'll be missed in this franchise. But we will get to see him briefly a little bit later on. So uh, keep that in your back pocket. So now uh, what I really need uh, from the listeners is this. Someone on this godforsaken earth needs to make a gif of Freddy celebrating the flack, the fact that he has slashed <laughs> and buried Craig Wasson. Someone make this happen. Why does this not exist? That th- Listen, are you sick of on Twitter of me always using Jason busting through a door as my go-to gif? <laughs> Well, make this happen, and I'll swap it out. Like I'll, I'll have something else. This is so I need happy. Freddy celebrating he's so in, in skeleton form. Yeah, he's so happy. Like it's genuine he's, he's joy carrying, he, he's experienced. He's carrying on like 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 his like his his team won the big playoff. Also, yeah. Why did exactly? They, <laughs> why did they dig such a giant fucking grave? They know it's a bag of bones, right? You don't need something six feet wide. Dig a hole, motherfucker. Just a hole. It doesn't need to it's be. Such a, it's massive. You're so right. It's like this gigantic like trough. They wasted of, so uh, much time digging a giant. You know, they're not. It's not World War One trench warfare. Like, just dig a hole. Maybe they thought they were going to like drive one of the cars on on top of it just to make sure. 
Sure, why not? <laughs> I like this idea. Uh, we now cut back to Kincaid, Kristen, and Nancy, and teardrop tattoo murderer Joey, as they become trapped in a hall of ornate mirrors because Freddy's not a basic bitch. He's not bringing you that <laughs> carnival feel. Like, these are ornate fucking mirrors. And he attacks them out of every single one. And they yep. all get pulled into these mirrors. And I don't know what happens on the other end of them. I assume it's bad. We don't really know. But he's at least going to separate them from one another. And uh, this is when Joey, after all this time, yells, which makes his superpower some sort of black bolt sonic thing. Exactly what I said. <laughs> exactly what I said. I was like, oh, great. Inhumans. Yeah. Oh, like we <laughs> need more say, of those. I, I need to see. I need to see like little sound waves come out of his mouth. Like, uh, <laughs> like a Saturday morning cartoon. Like, ah, uh, like that would dolphins that. show up and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> this movie needs more dolphins. It just so needs one dolphin. <laughs> You can imply that there are more. Just show me one dolphin. <laughs> Johnny Mnemonic does me the favor of showing me a fucking dolphin. <laughs> so uh, my favorite part about the sequence is when they all bust back through the mirrors. All the stuntmen who are portraying those three characters are covering their faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like take notes, Freddy's <laughs> Revenge. Cover your fucking face if you're a stunt person. It's like the in, in Spaceballs where Patricia Arquette's character stands up. It's like a guy with a blonde wig and a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's exactly that. It, and, I mean, it's not an obvious dummy. So that's minus points from Gina. <laughs> oh, uh, she loves an obvious is. dummy. Definitely. But, uh, I just need to, I just we, need to see just a, ma a store mannequin just like thrown through a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Stand by everyone. Cause out of nowhere, John fucking Saxon <laughs> arrives on a cloud of fairy dust <laughs> to let his only child know that he has died. Yeah. <laughs> died via crotch throw. <laughs> well, she, he doesn't tell her that. I mean, that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> I just want to let you know, Nancy, it, it just like that tells while him you, you were here in this dream. Freddy's <laughs> skeleton picked me up by my balls and threw me into a jagged piece of metal. And I don't blame you. I didn't have it was I didn't, my fault. I didn't have my tetanus shots up to date, so we know that goes. I so I've crossed over to the rainbow bridge. My heart could not take the jagged piece of metal, and my balls could not take his skeleton hands. And so I must cross over now. He's like Tinkerbell. Only that he has all of his own hair. What? What are you saying? That is all of that is all John Saxon's hair. It's not anyone else's. I don't know what you're implying. I mean, they might have grown his hair like in a petri dish and then apply it to his head. <laughs> but yeah, this scene, I, I blocked it out. I'm like, oh, okay, that we're having like, you know, a moment where where she's you know seeing because I'm normally in 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 most movies I'm a, I'm a sucker for any scene in which a, a character who has died like appears like like you know like the, the whole ghost thing mm -hmm. at the end where he like just shows up at the end to like you know tell her he loves her and then you know, ascend to heaven mm -hmm. or whatever I I'm always I'm Niagara Falls for a scene, any scene like that but in this <laughs> one I'm like I'm like oh no this this can't be what this scene is doing <laughs> yeah I mean we're not we're not going to start playing on chain melody here <laughs> <laughs> and yet the methods are not that far apart here's here's the thing though it turns out gina it's not actually john fucking saxon it is freddie what and oh. he is is pulling a whammy on old nancy which actually brings up more questions than it answers first of all yes i guess this implies that freddie can arrive and disappear out of a scene in fairy dust mm -hmm. why doesn't he use that more often i ask you <laughs> secondly so this whole heart to heart where he's like hey baby i love you i wish i was a better dad um i will always love you that's freddie that's yep. freddie telling nancy i have always loved you you can't convince me of any alternative alternative take i am shipping these two they belong together this is freddie's only real connection in this world and he can't quite bring himself to really insert the part he wants to insert inside of nancy and so but, but, the, but, the, but the, I, the I, knife I, gloves are are a replacement i i, I have to uh, i have to question your 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 logistics there i i how dare 
I, I, will, will this be what finally tears Kill by Kill apart? I, I, this is what ends it. I, I just don't know that, you know, if I wanted to tell someone how I felt about them, that uh-huh. I, it's particularly if it was romantic feelings, I don't know that I would appear to them in the form of their parent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good argument. Fair point. I mean, you got me there, Gina. You got me there. <laughs> um, actually, that's a good point. I uh, retract my previous statement, and I apologize to the members of our audience for my wild speculation. If, if maybe Freddie does have like a sort of paternal, because he plays the part a bit too well. I 100% <laughs> pick up what you're saying. He's a little too into that, where I'm just like, afterwards, I think that he was apologizing in some weird way, where he was just like, I think I did let you down. I let you down as a Freddy Krueger. I let you down. I let you down by murdering your boyfriend and, and all your friends <laughs> yeah. and, and your and your mom and your dad and everybody else you've ever known. I, I just, I just, you know, I just, I, I, things just got to hand sometimes. You know how it is. I, I, I don't need it. Like I got a problem, and I understand that now because I, I've been taking therapy in group with all the other kids. You know, the, 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 first, a lot. the first step is admitting you have a problem. <laughs> I, 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 I'm at the stage now where I'm making amends for, for killing everybody you love. Yeah. Listen, I have to admit to myself, I stab children. The children don't come after me. I stab them. Right. And I have to be that, man that enough was a to choice admit that. That was a choice that I made. <laughs> So do you think that finally that guy who wanted to rap with him in Freddy's Revenge and the Poolside Manic Massacre actually did get to him? I, I think he, he's like, hey, he, calm down, dude. What's, what's he, going on? He saw he he, you know, he saw the, the, the man inside him, the person he knows Freddy could be. <laughs> yep. The Freddy in the mirror, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh my God, let's make more Michael Jackson references. That is unproblematic in every single way, shape, and form. So with all of this heartfelt Lars, uh, Freddie returns to form with Nancy dead. Kristen takes a wild leap at him only to be felled by the worst stage fake punch I have seen in a long, long time. If you are going to fake punch somebody, you actually have to frame it in the camera where it looks like a hand connected with the face. You can't just, it doesn't, he just swipes and the sonic boom of his arm knocks her back. They looked at that and they're like, all right, we're good. Check the gate. We're done. Yep. Yep. Th- totally worked. <laughs> done in one moving on. So um, while all this is taking place, Mr. Strongman and Sonic voice boy are still behind a fucking door and they finally break through after Nancy's dead. Uh, and then Kristen uh, is about to get uh, slashed when Nancy rises from the from the grave like a proverbial Voorhees and uh, pushes Freddy's own glove into his chest. Ooh. And this prompts Craig, I was beaten by a skeleton Wasson, to get up and casually push Freddy's bones into a very large grave. And give the bones a consecrated burial, which he just so happens to know the words to by heart, because he's just been to that many fucking funerals, I guess. <laughs> uh, again, he could have used that priest. That priest could have been waiting in the wings, balls mm-hmm. untouched by Freddy Krueger, uh, to zoom in here with a rescue and consecrate that fucking grave like he's supposed to, but no. Uh, but I guess what Craig does is good enough, which if that doesn't tell you what Craig Watson was known for in Hollywood, nothing will. Good <laughs> enough. Uh, Freddy spins around as Jesus magic destroys him from the inside. Ooh. A more potent ad for organized religion I have yet to witness. And he then just disintegrates. Um, and that's it. R.I.P.D. Freddy, I uh, guess we'll never hear from you again. Uh, I'm just gonna clap my thank hands. God, thank God we took care of. Thank God we took care of that. Done and done. <laughs> oh, done and done. We're never gonna have to worry about never this guy back. again. We're That's gonna. It. We're gonna. <laughs> I I hate uh, you know Omar. I know you wanted to come back for another Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Too oh, bad there are it. no more because Freddy wow. is gone. They took care of it. They just did it. Put yeah, a stake. Well, put a next, stake into that monster's heart. <laughs> we're just gonna have to decide what franchise to move on to next. Um, <laughs> Uh, Kristen is sent off into a quote unquote, a beautiful dream. And then we cut to Nancy's funeral 
with, hey, look at that. It's the same priest from the original movie. That's right. Same burial plot. So this lends credence to our favorite fan trope from the Friday the 13th movie. Gina, do you believe that Nancy is buried on top of Glenn so they can spend eternity in the ground together? Well, I mean, Leo, let's, let's, (laughs) it's a little gross, but we're talking about a a five-year difference here. I mean, I I don't know they're just going to throw her on top of Glenn's bones. Well, (laughs) does he have bones left? He was juiced. So that's basically, true. It's like a ba- it's like a ba- it's like a baggie with some light with some fluids in it. <laughs> it's an unintentional waterbed inside of it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Squish. the guy with the Terminator glasses in that in that in that funeral procession? <laughs> is, that, is that a callback to something? It's just a guy with Terminator glasses. All right. And then in the middle of this, Craig Watson spies Ghost Nun and takes off after her in a very lumbering way. And then he happens to find, lo and behold, that she was Amanda Krueger. What? what, what, what? She is the mom of Freddy Krueger. And she was also the ghost, ghost nun. And she has a pretty sweet gravesite. I mean, not since Pamela Voorhees roadside resting place in part four, (laughs) have we seen a gravestone? So auspiciously placed. Yeah. I have questions. No, they're, sure. not, they're not. They're not questions. They're more observations. The Please. the 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 ending of this was was very abrupt. Yeah. Like like oh my god, you're his mother. Credits. Dawkins song. <laughs> you know, <it's> just, <laughs> like like it, it, I feel like that's a reveal that should have been a little earlier in the movie. Mm-hmm. And mm. and I, I I also don't know why the ghost chose to reveal herself to Craig Wasson. Yes. I mean, of all the I people, I, I would think Nan- Nancy more than anybody else earns that sort of, you know, revelation of, 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 you know, of Freddie's background. I agree 100%. I think it is the fatal flaw in the third act of this movie, which I enjoy quite a bit. Don't, don't let our, our riffing and having fun with uh, ever dismiss the fact that I genuinely like this movie quite a bit, but <laughs> I feel like um, the whole emphasis on Craig Wasson as the main character of this movie does it a slight um, disservice. He, he's ultimately the hero, and and I don't care for that. I, I think that in another movie, he would have just been killed off very quickly. Yeah, I would have loved if he had been killed off uh, first act, maybe the first five minutes. Maybe not, not even, even know that, his name. Not, well, I mean, I'll be a little more generous, but but okay. yeah, I would say that he shows up to that that he what happens to Nancy what should happen to him, and then Nancy is the one who does the whole throwing holy water and a cross because apparently Freddie's a fucking vampire now. <laughs> um, you know, I, yeah, I well, feel I feel that that would have been I, that would have been the, and. and a, a, a way it ended that I would have enjoyed more. And like I said, it doesn't make mm-hmm. any sense to me that he would be the one that Amanda Kruger would choose to reveal herself to. Right. It's like she's really trying to get a religious convert instead of kill a dream <laughs> demon. Uh, she I looked don't... at everyone's like survey information and it was just <laughs> like, uh, how do you religiously affiliate? And then she found the one like science question mark right in and was just like, got him. Got him. Yeah, got him. It, it's we like got she, one. she's she's like wasting time by by you know trying to talk to the person who would be least likely to believe her, <laughs> and that, that that just seems to be like again it's a waste of time, and you're and you're dealing with a dream demon. You know, talk talk to the person who has actually experienced this dream demon that you yes. that could that, could possibly benefit from some insight as to who he is and what his origins are. Again, this movie does not need Craig Wilson to be the main character Yo, of it. Not, it just not is so with crazy. Captain Gobsmack here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, the last thing we see is Craig Wilson sleeping the sleep of angels, knowing that he did all he could to prolong the misery of others. And next to his bedside, like a total creep, is the do it yourself 1428 Elm Street house. And then. A light turns on inside. No! We might have to do more movies, Gina. Oh, no. (laughs) But we don't have to do any more with Craig Wasson. No. 
Now, for, not for, unless for he being, has a cameo, I'm unaware of. For, for being the hero, he does not show up in another single Elm Street movie. No, he is forgotten and removed from lore, and the rest of the films are like, let's not have a Craig Wasson type. Let's just focus on some uh, blonde. Let's just have blondes, uh, just an endless procession <laughs> of blondes uh, for the next two movies and see if that helps. Uh, but we will get to that. That is Dream Warriors, everyone. We done did it. But before we go, well, we've had plenty of deaths in this episode because Freddy saved them all up for the last fucking episode. And mm-hmm. so it's time to choose your own death venture. And so, as always, let's run down what's available for you. If you had to die in some way portrayed in this section of the movie, uh, which one of these would you choose and why? overdose via freddy fingers uh just get stabbed just kind of stabbed in the (laughs) chest picked up by the crotch and thrown into a jagged piece of metal dream stabbed and then uh disintegrate via the power of christ and so omar as our guest i turn to you first for your answer i am gonna go with you know what surprise twist here I am going to go with getting picked up by the balls. <laughs> wow. And re- oh, okay. I mean, listen, you're John fucking Saxon in this scenario. <laughs> and so might, I, and I understand be, it on that level. And he might be too drunk to realize what's happening to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You are toasted on cheap whiskey and Coors. So you've got that coursing through your system when you're picked up by a skeleton hand by your crotch and thrown across a junkyard into a jagged piece of metal. Who else can say it? Who else can say that combination of words? If someone said (laughs) just one of those, Uh that would be already impressive. (laughs) So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it for the conversation piece. All right. No, I I understand that. Uh, Gina, what say you? I'm not a fan of needles, but I am very much a fan of body glitter. So uh, I am going to say that I I want to to go out like Taryn. Uh I I hope that my body is found in 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 a cool sort of, like uh, uh, Patty, you 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 Patty Smith and Scandal bodice and leather pants look. And there's an old per- there's an old person uh, reference for you, but I, <laughs> I I I that's yeah. So I'm going to have to go with with Taryn. I agree with you 100%. In fact, I'm going to back your play as much as I want to be John fucking Saxon. I think I want to be in Taryn's look more. First of all, I think I'd look great in a mm. mohawk, even if it is a faux hawk. And the height on that thing, please. Plus, you're going out via a high. So, like, you're just kind of going to fade into it, really. And, and, and you get so. scanner veins, which who among us does ah, not come want on. scanner veins? <laughs> who doesn't want to get the big old scanner vein? That's totes cool for, for reals with a Z. Uh, and other ways that uh, kids write that I, uh, I guess, make fun of when I used it. But not really, because I'm a little jealous. Anyways... That pretty much does it for Dream Warriors. But before we go, why don't we tell everyone where they can find us, uh, you know, out there in the world. Omar, uh, where can people hear more about what you do? You can find me on Twitter at Omar Najam on Instagram, which is Omar Najam Film. And I think that's it. Also on Spotify if you want to. Uh, that's or has today. fun and i mentioned that because uh, yeah just to hop on that spotify <laughs> account because i co-host a show called popular music with my friend ollie snelson where we each week choose a pop song and dive into it i talk about sort of like how that song came about and some fun stuff and then she is a music genius so she will go into like what makes it fun or what makes it sad yada 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 i love it already Consider me your latest listener. All right, Thank Gina, uh, w- uh, where can people find you on these here internets? I have my own website, which I write about movies and old television and pop culture at com. I am also a writer for The Spool, and apparently I tend to get Netflix's horror movies to review. <laughs> so uh, a, a, a recent one that I reviewed was The Perfection. Mm-hmm. Um and I, as of this, when when this airs, I will have uh, I will have reviewed I Am Mother, which is a uh, you know a scary robot movie. Which I, I love me some scary robot movies, so I am uh, yes. I don't know if I'm eagerly anticipating it, but I am anticipating it. So we we shall see. <laughs> um, 
And I am on Twitter under Porcelain72. That's right. People do it today. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Kill by Kill Pod, Gmail, uh, Kill by Kill uh, Podcast. I think, you know, Kill by Kill Pod at gmail.com if you have something longer uh, to say uh, to us. And of course, Instagram, uh, which I've been woefully terrible about updating. My apologies. It's only I have an insane amount of work to do every single day. And of course, the Facebook page and group, which we are trying to make a more interactive experience for you, the Kill by Kill listener. Uh, we don't have any new reviews on iTunes, so I would love it if you have not reviewed us on iTunes and you happen to listen through Apple Podcasts, please. Uh, I beg of you, uh, give us a review on there. Uh, five stars. Let us know what your favorite kill is on either Friday the 13th or, or Nightmare on Elm Street or any of the films that we've covered. And I'll read it right here on air. That is our promise to you, the Kill by Kill listener. Before we go, Gina, any updates on Patreon? Uh, we have one new patron, Holly Scrace. Um, so welcome, Holly, and thank you. Uh, once Patrick and I are both done our insane, well, you know, taking a break from the insane amount of work we get on our day jobs, uh, we hope to try a couple of new fun things for, for, for Patreon. So hopefully look for that sometime this summer or the end of the year or, you know, eight months from now we'll see <laughs> we have we have every intention we have every intention and intention is what matters here <laughs> that's right intention is about all the all that we have right now in terms of available time but we do have it and we're going to make it even better than it already is uh last month we had uh, texas chainsaw massacre 2 is the what we covered uh coming up here i think we're going to do Ho- motel hell one of gina's motel favorites hell. Yes. And then in July, it's another uh, listener's choice. Uh, so that's excellent. Do it today, people. Check it out. So until our next film, which buckle up, everybody, because the next one's a one and dunner. But believe you me, you have to watch this movie. It's a little something that I like to call pieces. And as the tagline on the poster say, it's exactly what you think it is. It's a crazy uh, made in Spain, kind of giallo, kind of slasher film with the lead character from Pod People, and you get to see his Wang. That's right. <laughs> Plenty of chainsaw action. Bluto from the Popeye musical is in this. Uh, Linda Day George screams bastard for at least 30 seconds. You gotta watch it. You'll never see that kung fu scene coming. It just happens out of nowhere. That's a lot of movie, baby. And we're going to take it all on next time here. So for myself and for Omar and for Gina, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Kill by Kill is produced by We Write Good and is intended for entertainment purposes only. A Nightmare on Elm Street is owned by New Line Cinema. No infringement is intended. Kill by Kill's logos were created by Josh Hollis. Visit him at joshhollis.com. The Kill by Kill theme was created exclusively for us by Revenge Body. Get the whole track and much, much more at revengebodymemphis.bandcamp.com today.